A new study has women seriously questioning the leave-in conditioner serums and relaxers they use every day. Today, we're investigating. Is there a link between hair products that target black women and an increased risk for breast cancer and fibroids? Singer Jordan Sparks and I have been talking about this issue, and she's here to investigate it. Jordan Sparks! Hello. Here she is. How are you? I'm <laughs> good. How are you? Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. It's important. I'm ready to investigate, for sure. So I sent my go-to hair investigator, Nikki Walton, also known as Curly Nikki, to see what we could uncover at a lab. The hair care market in the U.S. is over $13 billion a year, and black women make up $2.5 billion of that. On the label, it often says, for coarse and thick textures, or for coily and curly hair. I wanted to see what all these products were actually doing to our hair, so we visited the chemistry department at Medgar Evers College to get the lowdown. There's a suite of hair products marketed to African-American women and children. They range from relaxers, root stimulators, uh, hair defrizzers, leave-in conditioners, and hair lotions. And recent studies show that you have potentially dangerous ingredients that, if used long-term, could be very dangerous to your health. Dr. Christopher Box and his students designed a series of experiments immersing real hair into various hair care products for different lengths of time. So this is the before, and this is the after. And look, you can see there's a huge difference. You can see like all these sort of like fine structures seem to be missing in the post-treatment uh, of the relaxer. Mm -hmm. The most pronounced thing that we saw from these uh, microscopic images is how the natural state of your hair changes, has these ridges, this, this kind of natural exterior, but over time, that exterior is being changed. And um, I think it's damaging. Jordan Sparks and Nikki Walton are here. So Jordan, what's been your experience with these hair products, these straightening products? For me, when I was younger, I actually had an experience where I went to a salon and the under part of my hair gets really, really curly, much curlier than the top of my hair. So to make it more manageable, we were going to just relax the bottom. Um, I ended up with a whole head covered in relaxer and I remember laying there, I was maybe 14 years old. I didn't know, I didn't know to question her. I didn't know what to think. I just remember my eyes burning oh, <laughs> because no. the ammonia was so yes. strong. Yes. Yeah. And then after that, I remember my mom almost turning into like raw monster because my hair was straight and I have curly hair like yours. Yes. I have lots of curly hair and um, yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, I'm not touching that anymore. Like she that, was angry really because it happened to you or because you did it? Be, no, well, she took me there, but oh. it was only supposed to be the under part of my hair, not yeah. my whole head. And so, yeah. there's been an emotional breakup with some of these products. Yeah. Nikki? Yeah, no, definitely. For me, I revamped my whole lifestyle, my diet back in 2005, and that trickled down to like what I'm putting on my body, on my skin, my biggest organ, right? And that includes my scalp. So that, in addition to the fact that in the last 20 years, I've lost not one, not two, but three stylists to various types of wow. reproductive system cancers. Oh, no. And I can't say that it's because of their profession, but they're standing over those caustic chemicals. Yeah. There's no, you know, ventilation and there's, you know, no mask. So just for precaution, I choose to make these types of healthy choices. There's so many other alternatives. Yeah. I'd rather just stay safe. And I agree. So big debate over this. I'm going to start off by explaining, maybe Jordan, you come with me. Sure. Exactly I'm what's gonna... happening with these products when they're applied on your hair. Okay. And to do that, I want to zoom in to the head. Okay. But then I'm going to come back and I'll talk a little bit about what the science says about this. So here we are standing right next to someone, right, who's about to have something done to their hair. Now notice how the hair is a little curly here, mm -hmm. right? And it's curly, let's zoom in here, yeah. because it has natural bonds that hold it together. Yeah. The chemical relaxants, as we're putting on those little dots, right, they're put there to make the hair straight, damaging the natural properties of your hair. That's how it straightens it out like that, right? Yeah. And how, what does it Stripping do? Stripping it. Yeah, watch it. See, it strips out mm -hmm. the outer layer of your hair, leaving the ends of your hair thinner and more vulnerable to splitting. That's the split ends you see there, right? Yeah. I mean, this is not natural. It's not supposed to look like that. Yeah, it also would damage the curl pattern, too, if you keep doing it. You, it takes a long time to get the curl pattern back. So when you when you watch that animation, do you, yeah. does that remind you when you were 14, lying there? Yeah, a little bit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't want that to happen, but I'm actually more concerned about what those chemicals do over time. So let me Long bring in term, yeah. uh, Dr. Jen Caudill is joining right. us. And this is something that 
I, I want to dig into it because Nikki highlighted the emotional disconnect that's happened here. Yes. What are your concerns as a physician about what these chemicals may do to our bodies? Well, yes. Well, first of all, a lot of these products have chemicals with names such that it's even hard to pronounce the names. It's lots of chemicals, difficult to pronounce names. And I relate so much to both of these ladies. My hair actually is relaxed right now. I've been getting a relaxer since I was very young, and I have very similar experiences. So this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart as well for personal reasons as it is all of us. This is the thing, though. You know, there have been some studies that have looked at some of the chemicals in these products that are known as endocrine disruptors. These are chemicals that may affect the hormones in our body, they may mimic the hormones, block them, etc. And there was another study that showed that at least 70% of a certain number of these products have endocrine disruptors in them. Now the big question is though, is what do these endocrine disruptors do to our body? Now that's the big question because we actually don't have the answer. We still need more studies. There's still a lot we just don't know. But if I just look at it from from the outside as a, as a physician, yes. I see that black women have two to three times the incidence, for example, of fibroids. Mm -hmm. Two to three times the rate of fibroids. It's a right. big difference. So has there been a link identified between any of these compounds, these endocrine disruptors, right. And the product and the uh, and these these reproductive organ issues. So that's a great question. Again, an issue that's near and dear to my heart as well as so many other women and African American women. Right now, we don't have a necessary causal link between the two. We need more studies. We just don't have the research that can tell us definitively if there is a link. But the most important thing here, I think, is that we're asking the question. Yeah. This is something that needs to be looked at. This is something that I think so many of us are so interested in to see: is there a connection? Is there a link? So that's I think that's probably the key take home here is that. We're starting to ask these questions so that hopefully we can get answers. The Nickers of the world have lost dear ones. They don't know if it's what it's caused by. Jordan affected emotionally by this. So I put all it together and I think we need to actually ask okay. the questions a little more loudly. We, we actually reached out to the Personal Care Products Council. Here's what they said. They responded pretty quickly. A recently published study mischaracterizes ingredients that have a long history of safe use throughout the world. Ingredients referenced in the study are commonly used in a diverse range of personal care products. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration states that parabens has no effect on human health. So you've heard both sides now. If you are worried, and some people will be, some of you aren't, but if you are worried, it's important to know that not all hair products have these chemicals. 